Welcome back, everyone, to the conclusion of the Planets for Each Ascendant series. Um, this should be video number 86. We've gone through every single planet as it relates specifically to each ascendant. And the goal of the series, as you know, we start in the very beginning. You can go back and review that first video, was to understand how each ascendant is meant to function in its highest capacity. If the blueprint of your ascendant was functioning in its ideal capacity. And this was not meant to talk about what is it like to have a certain planet in a certain sign or um, things of that nature, or a certain house. It was to think about based on if you have a, a Libra ascendant, what does it mean to have Venus having the capacity to be exalted in a particular house or to be debilitated in a particular house? What houses does Venus rule over? And what does that tell us about the role of Venus for a particular ascendant? We did that for every single uh, ascendant. So if you go back and you look for your ascendant, or if you're an astrologer and you just want to get some deeper insights into uh, an individual, just find the specific videos within the playlist of the planets per ascendant, the planets for each ascendant, and watch Sun, Moon, Mars, um, Jupiter, Saturn, Mercury, Venus. Watch each of those videos for uh, each planet for each ascendant, so you will see why an ascendant functions the way it does. It's not just People just don't do things because they're a Libra ascendant, because Libra is a certain way. They do things because each planet rules a particular house for a Libra ascendant, and each planet has a particular exaltation and debilitation position for each ascendant. And that gives us deeper insights into how individuals are meant to function in their highest capacity. And we have to remember that astrology is useful for people who essentially think they are people. They think they're individuals. They think they're not part of the, the wholeness of life or the whole consciousness. So they're going to be functioning through a personality. They're going to be functioning through a persona. They're going to be functioning through a point of view. And it is the ascendants that each of us possess that tell us what that particular point of view is, which is wonderful because it allows us to understand how to interact with different people or what are our own needs or how are we going to interact with others, which in turn gives us a greater sense of self-awareness, which allows us to interact with the world in greater harmony. We need all 12 ascendants. We need every planet. Every planet, every ascendant, every combination gives us um, the ingredients for life to function on this plane. And the better we understand it, the better awareness we have about it, the better, uh, more conscious we are of how we're uh, ideally going to interact with this world, um, the more harmony we will tend to experience in our lives. And even if there's not harmony, uh, the more we will see how certain disharmony or even every now and then conflict um, is necessary for growth or for growing. Uh, we have uh, the cruel planets, the malefic planets for a reason. They serve a role. And sometimes conflict and hardship uh, can be very useful. Conflict can help make us stronger, can help sharpen that edge of our sword. Hardship and suffering, as many yogis say, adversity is the greatest prosperity. Why? Because when you experience adversity, you begin to realize that you are not this persona, this body, mind, um, personality only. You start to turn within and recognize what your, your, your source is, which is the role of yoga practice. So uh, I appreciate the time you have taken. It has been at least two years, I think, since I've begun this uh, series. The time you have taken to watch this, to learn, and um, we give a special thanks to those astrological apprenticeship students who also participated to uh, help contribute, to speak with me, to share their ideas on these topics. And again, if you are interested in exploring uh, the study of astrology in a very foundational, step-by-step, -step, pragmatic, probably boring, you probably will be bored, especially if you're used to YouTube videos where you jump around from one thing to another. But if you want to take a very direct approach where you build up the fundamental building blocks, um, you can go to vedic-astrology, 
dot teachable dot com and um, I should have another video on this on the channel somewhere where uh, it is it is the self paced astrological apprenticeship course which if you go through it all it takes uh, around two years to complete um, all nine courses from the apprenticeship course plus bonus courses um, all set up in a structured fashion so that by the time you're done you will have a very solid grasp of how astrology functions and how to put things together in a way that makes sense when it comes to reading a chart. So this will conclude uh, this teaching. Uh, I appreciate everything that you've done, commenting, uh, sharing your emails with me, your insights, your thoughts, how you've grown through this whole process, exploring these ascendants. And um, feel free to review all the previous videos on this channel. Uh, there's years worth of material to study uh, to understand yourself better and to understand astrology uh, in greater detail. So be well and thank you very much. Mm -hmm.